That's so Dude, great. Yeah, yeah, man. So, Jack, I, I just, you know, I've recently, we just met. This is our first time ever playing together. Yeah. And um, so um, I apologize for all the goofy shit I was playing, but I was just so interested in watching you play and what you're doing and um, the kind of command and finesse that you have. Um, uh, are you schooled? Do you, do you, did you go to music school? Or um, I did, yeah, briefly. Um, I went to GIT a long time ago. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, and mostly what I got from that was just learning. I didn't know any kind of music theory. I mean, I just was like a, you know, blues band guitar player. I just learned things off of records. Yeah. And then yeah. I went there and I had a really great music theory teacher who kind of helped me out with you know, just all the basic stuff. Yeah. Like understanding chords and, um, you know, just intervals and all that stuff. Um, but then, you know, still mostly everything I play is just from listening to records, playing a million gigs, you know, like everybody. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, you could be, you could be a, like a major session guy if you wanted to. Oh. You know, you, well, you, you I mean, got the chops to do all that. Um, and but you're kind of more doing a different kind of a thing and you're doing the the online youtube you've got your yeah. youtube channel well i got into that uh over the pandemic you know because uh -huh. um, i got two i have two little kids i had a kid right in the middle of the pandemic wow so um and before that i was just on the road you know i was yeah. like a road guy um and when all that came to an end um you know i had to kind of scramble to figure out how i was going to make a living yeah and i had taught some i uh, taught some lessons so i kind of knew i i had the skill to do it mm -hmm. and and just uh, so i just leaned into it and then you know meeting guys like brett and other people really helped me out with that and now it's at a point where i make more money doing that and i get to be home with my kids all the time it's amazing and yeah. to me is a, is a guy who's not a big youtube guy but i enjoy watching them I think the fascinating thing to me is, and this may be things that everyone knows but me, you know, but it's like, it's, how, how can I say this? It's like having a YouTube channel and video, uh, making videos of yourself playing, it's, it's like, that's what artists used to do going playing gigs on the road now you do it yeah through youtube and you reach way more people i think that that's what i'm trying to say yeah is i'm fascinated by how many people that you can reach you know what brett's doing and what you're doing yeah so like i discovered you're playing like we we met yeah yeah two yeah. weeks ago yeah and brett Not, had mentioned yeah. you but i've never heard you play well and i've been a huge fan of your playing for years oh uh, wow because i've seen you uh with pat you know yeah at third and lindsley yeah several times yeah and always loved your playing um but yeah it's uh the thing i've noticed about it that's cool about the youtube thing is that it's worldwide so you can reach people everywhere it's and so, so yeah, like yeah. if you're into like me like i'm into a lot of obscure old music i like you know i like to do videos about bb king or grant green or you know mike bloomfield or like pretty obs yeah you know i mean m not mainstream anymore guys um but there's like dudes in norway that want to watch that or guys in australia or japan or anywhere that want to tune in and watch that stuff and so you can reach a pretty big audience um doing whatever you want to do and that's that's the coolest thing about it because i can just wake up and go what do i want to talk about what do i want to play i yeah. don't it's it's not like uh i've got to catch on trends or anything yeah 
Yeah, and that's really good. Do your there, thing. There, there's a there's a new video. I think it's on Amazon or Hulu called Born in Chicago. Have you oh, seen yeah, that? Oh yeah, watched it. Yeah, my buddy Chuck worked on that. He did. Uh, he mixed that. It's the fantastic. Art. Yeah. Yeah, it's really about, great. from the perspective of Paul Butterfield and Mike Bloomfield. It's about the blues in in Chicago. And there was a bunch, like Steve Miller was a part of that whole thing yeah, too, which is unbelievable. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, it's so great. Like I'm like, it's so weird that we're that we live in Nashville here because Nashville is now this multi-genre. You know, everything goes here. Yeah, uh, uh, anything goes. But you know, for a long time it was a country town. But I'm basically a, like the blues, you know, and some like, you know, Stones and the Faces and stuff like yeah, that. But yeah. it's like. I'm playing on records. All I ever really do is play the blues. I don't really yeah. know how to play uh, Brett Mason licks. Or well, anything. it's funny when I came to Nashville. I, I'm the same way. I, I I listen to blues and R and B and and jazz and stuff. Um, and I came to Nashville and I was playing some gig and and the guy sent me a bunch of songs and it was like a bunch of George Strait songs or something some, stuff I'd never played. I hate the sound of George Strait. Well, records. well, but I'm they listening so bad. Yeah, it's just gonna get me like <laughs> they're just they're like, yeah. shitty sound. But I'm records. listening to it and I'm like, there's like an outro solo and I'm like, man, this is just the blues and it's Reggie Young playing yeah, just like yeah. blues licks. Yeah. And I go, oh, and it clicked for me. I was like, I could do that. I could do this, you yeah. know. And then and you realize, like, you know, Reggie Young obviously I got played on so Reggie. many incredible Reggie a good bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I played on an Etta James record and wow. um, Seven Year Itch, which is kind of like yeah. a seminal record for. I was really young, and it's me and Reggie on guitars and um, and Steve Cropper. Wow! So you know, I was like, it felt like I was ten years old. You know, so I'm playing on this record, and we're playing all these like kind of. You know rhythm stuff you, you know most of the songs were were, were were like you know or you know it was all that kind of stuff yeah, yeah. it was so much fun to play and but we played rhythm in in um barry beckett was uh yeah. the, uh uh, producer of uh, the record so we got done with our tracks and I said to Barry Barry I'm ready to burn man I'm ready to play some solos man yeah. he's like Reggie's gonna be doing that <laughs> and it was like and then when the record came out and I heard I was like I understand yeah I, I get it you know because his solos were so great yeah but yeah. never like a show-off guy but Probably the greatest session player. Ask Bukovac or Dan yeah. Huff who the best session player was. You know, they'll probably say, you know, Reggie is really right, right up there at the top. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's they, cool, man. Thank you. 
Thing that, that interests me about your playing is this good area to, to be doing I don't know but like I really you know just discovering your playing it's something that I really like about how you'll have some simple changes but then you'll just give a hint it's it's a har harmonically a little bit sophisticated you know and you sort of move a little bit through it and you just give just a touch of it so it's not like showy yeah. kind of bullshit, but it's like yeah. it's really well. Like if he, I if I played like uh, if I played. It's like when, 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 when I was playing, and you went. Yeah, what is that? What, what is that um, right there? That's like an E minor, like an E minor with a major seven in it, and then a, you can add the nine on top. That's so yeah. cool. You kind of get this like uh, 
little augmented thing yeah. in there, yeah. which is cool. It's like super expressive. Yeah, you can use that also if you're going, yeah, if you're going from like E minor to B7, you can yeah. do that. Yeah, cause, cause that's inside of B7. Yeah, chord. yeah, yeah. You can do that yeah. kind of cool stuff. Yeah. Um, All right, I learned yeah. something new just now, yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, yeah. What was that? Yeah. That's, uh, so that, uh, let's see, what am I playing here now? That's the same, same thing. But you can kind of- Oh, I see. Wow. Kind of does do this little like rake thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Really great, man. Yeah, that's like, um, yeah, there's a lot of ways you can look at that stuff. Um, but I just think about the, I just think about like the chord and like what's a note I want to pick out over it. So like, I mean, I was kind of noodling there when you were playing. Yeah, totally it wasn't my best yeah. thing, but yeah. but if I'm hearing like just a static E minor chord, yeah. You know, I just think about like how different notes sound against the, yeah. you know, whether you want to play the nine or, um, you know, the raised six. Yeah. And certainly that major seven, you know, this kind against of. Against the minor chord. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, that kind of thing is yeah. just, you know, and I, cool. And, and it also, doesn't work all the time, but. Yeah. And, and I also notice that there's some BB King in the way that you play. That's what I noticed when I. Oh, when yeah. I, that's, I noticed when I was watching your channel is that there's a, there's a lot of BB King to, to what you do. And I've seen BB play a number of times. And yeah. He's. He he's so, I mean, he's one of the greatest guitar players ever. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of dumb to say that. Everybody knows that, but it's like, yeah, he'll have little tiny hints of stepping outside the lines, and he doesn't yeah, know yeah, what yeah. it is. He would just do it. I remember watching him play, going like, I don't know what he's doing, but it's sort of a little bit. Um, I, yeah, I I have a feeling like he he knows he has a good foundation of what's going on in the music from being a band leader for yeah. so long yeah. and leading a band with a horn section yeah. and having to it, there's a he did like an instructional tape a long time ago like in the maybe in the 90s oh i didn't know that yeah he did a it's with another teacher and he's it's kind of an interview but he's playing a lot and he's just talking about different <coughs> things talking about his vibrato and all that yeah. stuff but there'll be like little hints in there where he'll he'll just say something like oh yeah it's like an eight bar progression and you know from the five like these little things where you're like oh yeah he knows totally exactly what's going on in the music he's playing um, here's here's my favorite bb king yeah play. i like when when he goes like yeah 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 and it's not it's sort of a my phone's going i need to turn my phone off yeah 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 and then he also goes yeah like yeah that one. yeah all that yeah yeah i love this i love just the just yeah. coming down on that you yeah. know that big jab there yeah in a sense of rhythm his uh, his sense of rhythm is like yeah that's totally it yeah i mean that's all i care about is that like, yeah, yeah that's really yeah, you that's can really get, all you i can get do. through so many genres of music yeah soloing which is yeah. that stuff you know yeah yeah and some of the country records i play when it gets to take a solo that's really all i'm doing you yeah know, i don't know yeah. how to do the other stuff and uh yeah, yeah that's what i do a lot too it's yeah. it's it's the best yeah it's weird to even i was listening to a live thing of him i don't even know when it was from it was a it was it came up on like a like a playlist or something it was live bb king and i i swore i was like wow this this is a really good Dwayne allman recording that i'm listening that's just what i thought it was the yeah. intro solo it sounded exactly like Dwayne allman 
And then he starts singing and I go, oh man, it's Beatty. Um, that influence he, that he had was like, it's everywhere. I like uh, the um, why I sing the blues. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of mid 80s, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Not, or maybe late 70s. It's not like the classic BB King era, but I love um, the way he plays and sings mm -hmm. on that song. It's like Hugh McCracken on, yeah, yeah, on yeah, rhythm yeah. guitar. Yeah. It's like the New York, New York guy. stuff, you know, yeah. era. I, I really, is this like, interesting at all it's just kind of yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Point is gonna people need to know about Hugh McCracken I mean they do you don't know does anybody even care about this yeah I like stuff? the records that he did with the Crusaders guys too like yeah Joe Sample and yeah those and are the, incredible uh, records the my one of my favorite so I'm a huge Larry Carlton freak yeah but one of my favorite BB things is the live in Africa concert yeah with Larry playing rhythm guitar just, yeah just it's fantastic. absolutely killing it, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I, I've seen BB play about five or six times. I yeah, I got play. to see him. I saw him three times. The first time, what when I saw him though, towards the end, you know, uh, you know, he was just getting older. Um, I didn't see it towards. I kind of didn't want to go. I'd seen some videos of him towards the end. I didn't want to go. Yeah, it's I like saw you don't want to see your kind heroes. of a later show. But I did see him in the mid '90s or maybe late '90s, and he would still come out like and stand up for the first couple of songs and then sit down and and that was great. Mm -hmm. He played. He played incredible. He had that Gibson amp. Like it was like right in front of my face. You know, just blowing it. It was great, man. Yeah, he's probably my favorite if I had to pick one. Yeah, I think I'll probably. I, I always said that if you wanted to get the, if you if somebody asked me like, what are the, if, everything you need to know about guitar, if you listen to BB King live at the Regal, and Hendrix Electric Ladyland, there's everything you need to know about guitar in those in those two records to me. You know, because yeah. Hendrix had all the great rhythm and the, all the cool so mm -hmm. solos and sonic stuff, and then BB is just pure soul. You know, so that's that. Was yeah, me. yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I mean, if you want to get into, especially even with jazz stuff, like if you want to get into jazz, listen to BB King and listen to Ray Charles. You yeah, because it's like that's the gateway in. You know, in my opinion, and then you hear like Oscar Peterson or somebody like that, and it takes it one step. Yeah. further down that uh rabbit hole yeah i remember matt R rowling saying that oscar peterson was his guy that's that's who he he always liked mm -hmm. that um i have a somewhere i have a, a cd of ray charles's audition tape oh wow it's really good like audition for Atlantic Records or yeah. something, Le yeah. or just an audition tape he sent around for Atlantic Records, and wow. and Ahmet um, has is trying to teach him uh, the mess around. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Ahmet wrote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what about this? You know, and it's yeah. it's really it's really really interesting to hear. I've I've also got a CD of um, Stevie Wonder. Exp before they recorded i don't i don't can't remember off the top of my head which song it is but he sings all the different parts so it's it's the cd and there's no band it's him going so the bass is going to go <laughs> and then the horns go and he goes and he explains wow. he sings every part on um oh what's i can't remember what the song songs is in, like. something in the songs in the key of life uh, it's a little kinda. bit it's a little bit it's a little bit later than that but just to hear him do all that and you're like oh my god you know it's amazing wow so. yeah man i guess you got i guess you'd have to do that if you can't write if you yeah. can't write out a chart That's right, he's blind yeah. yeah yeah you know man that's great
That was so beautiful playing there, bro. That was like, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. That was fun. Woo! That was good stuff, man. One more? Yeah. It's just, it's just you know, it's I, I, I always wonder, like, because I always no, feel like perfect. when I'm doing this that I'm like not Well, show me, show me some cool. I, I want to learn some of those cool Hendrix. I'm going to drop it. Um, yeah. licks you yeah let me, you do the way you do it because uh it has such a cool sound <laughs> kind of noisy with the fuss on that's okay right is yeah, that you're you're right? Yeah, yeah i can do that off so just the but 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 i like think uh, you did yeah 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 that that, that that's yeah it. it's like uh so that's 1983 a new one. yeah that's what yeah, it is so, so that. that's a new one for me that's, yeah you it's hard it, I feel like it's a little easier for me to do that on a Fender guitar yeah. or a Fender scale guitar yeah, than on yeah. a Gibson. I I can always get that. And then there's there's the one that we both did, which is it always sounds good with delay to me because yeah. it sounds like. So when you come down, this is the thing that's always interesting to me how people kind of do that. When you come down on it, so you're bending. Do you come down on the same fret? Yeah. Because I'll do it. Uh, yeah, I've never been able to do it like that yet. But the way I, the way I do it the oh, most just, is uh, kind of, I'll do, Oh yeah. which is not really a Hendrix way. Yeah, that's so cool. I'll switch fingers. Yeah, which is sounds weird doing it slow, but but here's here's the, here's the other one that, that, that I like a lot. Is I like going. Uh, um, I'm gonna yeah, 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 yeah. Pull out the yeah. It just sounds so bad. Do you do it all on? 
You grab it all with one finger. Yeah. 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 And like it's the lower the string is, it's a... It yeah, sounds yeah. really good on the low string. Yeah, yeah. And, and then there's, a, you know, the, the uh, there's always a, like... It just sounds yeah. great. And then it, there was always the... Yeah. Yeah. It's probably in every in everybody already knows that already, but uh it's uh, I love applying you know who who did a lot you there wasn't a junior brown records? Yeah, yeah. You know how he played every once in a while he'd play all that country stuff on that weird guitar. Then yeah. he would like do a Hendrix lick in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. It's there's a, really a I have one record of him where there's a lot the last <coughs> track is a live thing, it's a blues. And he's playing straight up Albert King. Wow. And it sounds like really close yeah like really like because he's got that kind of he might have some kind of out of phase thing on that weird guitar yeah um and he's got that going on and he's yeah he's just playing all the albert king licks you know um it's really cool yeah he's a great guitar player man yeah that's cool you uh when i hear you play you do those those Hendrix little double bend things and you're playing all the time and it yeah. it always just kind of jumps out it's like oh man it's so cool to yeah, hear that the, this is just that I mean everybody yeah yeah that's cool very cool well we got some good stuff there it's, it's so funny man how Everybody does that stuff different. I was watching some Jeff Beck thing, like blow by blow era, and he was doing that kind of different little take on it. Oh, here's 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 one that I like that that I really like, and it really works with distortion on. So this guitar is just noisy, so I'm I know it shouldn't be, but 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 I I, I like. That's a cool sound, isn't it? It like makes a, a fifth, you know, but it's, but, but. It's bending up the G string. And it, it, it really works out like in a rock and roll, you know. Playing that, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I saw some live thing of Hendrix, and he was doing. He did that, and I'm like, oh, what is that? Yeah, yeah, that's wild, man. It's like the louder you are, the better that sounds. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it would, yeah. It, so yeah so much of that is like uh just the sheer volume of it have you ever heard those isolated tracks of any of that hendrix stuff no but i'd like to have it i uh i've heard some of it i i, I can get you some i'd like to have some I, of that yeah i think i got a source for that yeah um but yeah i think when he was recording like are you experienced there was two two separate amps um, one with the fuzz and one without. Oh, really? I think so. And you can hear, when you hear the isolated tracks, you hear how raw it is. Like the cabinets are rattling. Yeah. You know, it's totally, you know, it's not pristine at all. Um, but yeah, tons of low end out of that, you know, just that sound. Well, I always said like the greatest Stratocaster sound is um, Voodoo Child. Oh, okay. And part of the reason that I think it's the greatest sound is that like the intro, you know, where, where he's and he's tuned down a whole step, you know, and all that. But oh, yeah, yeah. He, he's flying through the Marshall, but there's also um, uh, his vocal mic is on and the drum mics. So his yeah. his um, 
his 412 is bleeding into all those room mics, which creates all this low end ambience. It really makes you be there, you know. So part of the thing that uh, that I'm interested in is, you know, as we all are, is different ways to record. And I've gotten into trying to record like a 412 and have a vocal mic and then record and yeah. the drum mics and have them all on and then bust them down when so you have a stereo. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. you have it's like that's like what those recordings are like. So, so you have a recording where you have all the drum, and there's some phasing issues you got to deal with phase, but then you like you bust them down to a track because you're not going to give someone a um, they ask you to do an over guitar part with 10 you're not going to give them a, one guitar part that's 10 tracks, you know, yeah. they'll, yeah. they'll they just won't do it. So, but if you, you know, you after you record it, you put them down to a track, then you have this super great low end you oh, know nice. guitar sound yeah because that's how those in the first uh yeah. almond brothers record you can hear the yeah you know everybody's in the room well and all the like fit uh well early 60s blues records or you know like Fred, old freddie king records you can hear they're all in the same room totally. and yeah. you know and they're probably you know uh the sax player is probably on a mic and then moving out of the way when he's not playing and um, yeah, you hear all of that room stuff in there. Yeah, I love all that. That's kind of getting, that's, that gets lost in the whole modern world of, uh, modeling and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm.